In this video, we are going to do a quick exercise and practice working with indices in Grasshopper. The objective of this exercise is to create labels, text tags, for each of these circles so that we could identify them. This tutorial is a follow-up to the previous video, so if you feel you might need to catch up, do that before continuing. On my left in the Rhino viewport I have some circles and I will begin by referencing these circles as curved geometry into Grasshopper. And I am also going to turn off the preview of their layer in Rhino, so we only see what is referenced in Grasshopper. Let's go under Display, Dimensions and let's pick the text tag 3D. Text tag 3D component requires location and a plane to place the text. We're going to keep the default Rhino World XY plane. Then it requires the text to be displayed, the size of that text, and we also have options for color and text justification. Let's start with the location for the text. I'm going to go under Surface Analysis and take the Area component. The Area component takes closed planar geometry and computes its area. So this can be a planar surface or a mesh or closed curves as these circles are. The area component has two outputs. So we get the area values and the geometric center points or centroids. I'm not going to discuss how these centroids are found since we are now working with circle geometry so it's quite straightforward and it works similarly with other simple convex polygons too. Let's use these center points as the location points for the labels. Now we need the text to display for each object. For that I'm going to use their indices. So let's go under sets, list and choose the item index component. We could use the curves as inputs for the item index component, but since we are not changing the data structure here, we can also use the centroids. Maybe it is better for the organization on canvas. Let's connect the output indices as text input. I'm going to adjust the text size, change the color to black, and leave the justification option as is for now. So we have created text tags for each object using their indices but I would like to change their location. I would like to have the label closer to the outline. Let's go under Transform, Affine and choose Scale. This component scales objects uniformly in all directions. Let's input the circles as base geometry to be scaled. Pay attention to the Rhino viewport. The scaling transformation has happened, but the result is not what I have aimed for. The circles were scaled according to the origin point of the default Rhino XY plane. So we need to input the list of center points here, assigning a different center point for each circle to scale them individually. I'm only going to use these smaller circles to find the point for the text tag. So this geometry will not be visible. And the last thing we need to do is to define the scaling factor. So we need to input here a floating number parameter that is lower than 1, just not too low. I'm going to use a panel for that, but you can use a number slider as well. The next step is to find a point on the inner circle. So I'm going to go under Curve, Analysis and choose Point on Curve component. Connect the geometric output to the input here. And in the Rhino viewport, we can immediately see new green dots on the inner circles. A curve still needs to have the start and the end, so it must still have its domain and you should see it as an arc with a 360 degree angle. If you right click on the point on curve capsule, you will see some popular options for positioning the point on the curve. Or you can pick some arbitrary point simply by moving the slider. Let's replace the location points for our text tag. And I'm also going to reorder the capsules. And if you need to, you can also change the positioning of the text by right-clicking on the justification input and choosing another option. Let's move on and create additional labeling. I'm going to select and create a copy of the text tag group, disconnect the location and the text, and I'm also going to change the color. So we have the labeling 
the indices displayed on each of the circles. I would also like to identify the largest one and display the length of its radius. And for this exercise, we're going to use the expression component. You will find this component under math, script, expression. Using the expression component, you can create your custom equations or use specific mathematical formulas that you can find online and apply to your project. Let's double click on the component to open the expression designer dialog box. Here we can find some templates for functions, also mathematical constants and operators that we have discussed in previous tutorial. To see more possible functions, you need to click on the top right corner icon. So here we have a list of functions available for the expression component and their short descriptions. So let's see what do we need. We know there is a relationship between the area and the radius of the circle. So the area of a circle, capital A, equals pi multiplied by the radius r squared. So from this equation, we derive the radius r equals square root of the area a divided by pi. So we need to find the square root function on this list. Here it is. And also you can see a short description on the right. I'm going to close this list and go back to the expression designer and start typing the equation. S Q R T open brackets. Here we define the number we get the square root of. So X, uh, the area of the circle divided by the constant pi. You can hover over it to see a short description, click to choose and then close brackets. And let's click OK. We have some warnings here. It's because the inputs are empty. So let's first remove the y variable because we're not using it and then connect the area output to the expression. So it all works, but I like being consistent with variables. Uh, we can change the x to the capital letter A to match the area output. We have found the radiuses and we can see their lengths in the panel. And as I've mentioned before, I would like to identify the largest circle and display its radius. To extract the maximum value from the list, first we're going to use the bounds component and construct the domain. And then we go back again under math and choose the deconstruct domain to extract the maximum value. In my case, the start of the domain would be 1 and the end of the domain is 3. So this is the longest radius. The next step is extracting a centroid of a circle matching a specific radius. To do that, I'm going to go under sets, again sets, and choose the number index component. For the number to search for, we have to use the maximum length radius, so the end of the domain, and the set to operate on is a list of radiuses directly from the expression output. Don't forget that the data type matching is important here. We have covered this aspect in the previous tutorial. I'm going to make some space here by holding the Alt key and dragging the canvas grid line to the right. To filter different types of data, so curves or center points, based on the radiuses, we need to use additional components. I'm going to go under Sets, List, and choose the list item. We're going to filter the list of center points. This list corresponds to the list of the radiuses. So the center points go to the list input and we need an index value matching the largest radius and we get that value as an output from the number index. As I select the list item component, you can see which dot in the Rhino viewport becomes green. So we have the location sorted. For the text, I would like to use another simple component here. Let's go under sets text and choose the concatenate. This simple component combines text fragments. It's a zoomable component. If you zoom in on it enough, you will see the possibility to add inputs for the text fragments. For me, two is going to be enough. For the first text fragment, I'm going to use a panel and type in something like the largest, then click enter and type in capital R equals and leave it here. And for the second fragment, I'm going to use the length of the largest radius. 
Let's connect the combined text fragments to the text input for the text type 3D. And notice in the Rhino viewport I now have a blue label identifying the largest circle. If we were to go back to Rhino, select a smaller circle and scale it enough, we can see the label jumps off the previous circle onto the new largest one. Let's investigate different example. Let's add more same size circles to our initial list. So in this instance, I have four circles that are the largest ones. They have the same radius, but different indices. If you would like to use text tags for fabrication, let's say you'd like to have the labels suitable for engraving, you could employ openness tools for that. So here I'm simply reconnecting the text tag inputs to the text component from the open nest. We get the text translated to curves in the output here. Custom font option is available in the newest release. If you are interested in other ways to find the radius of a circle, rounding floating numbers to specific decimals and using text format options in Grasshopper, check out the links in the description below. So this is it for this exercise. Keep learning and I will see you in the next tutorial.